Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 34 of Learn Lightroom 5. And in this episode we're going to talk about watermarks. And I'm going to show you how to apply watermarks to your images using Lightroom. Before we do that, I just want to mention my thoughts on watermarks. I generally don't use them. Um, I used to uh, when I first started out with digital photography and processing my images on my own computer, I added watermarks. But then I thought it kind of distracts from the image, so I generally don't use them anymore. It is a hotly contested topic. I see a lot of these Facebook pages and Google groups where people will post images and someone else complains that the watermark is obnoxious or something like that. <clears throat> so generally, I don't use watermarks. It's a personal decision everyone has to make. I do suggest though if you're a wedding photographer or a portrait photographer and you just did a session or even a lifestyle photographer or something like that and you did a session and you're just posting some images to Facebook, uh, put your watermark on there so you're driving traffic back to your studio or to your website um, and also if anyone upscounds the, the digital image from Facebook or whatever and they printed it. Walmart or something they're gonna to have to deal with your watermark because it is your image so in those cases definitely put a watermark it on your watermark on your image um, but in most cases I don't think you really need it I mean everyone who's a photographer is gonna have their images stolen trust me I've had mine stolen um, everyone everyone will it's just something you're gonna to have to deal with what you should do is copyright your images and I will be covering that in some future episodes of some of my videos but right now we're going to talk about watermarks and how you could use them in Lightroom. Um, really easy to do actually. Um, first we're going to edit some watermarks and create them. There's two different watermarks you could create. You could create a text watermark or a graphic watermark. And I'm going to show you both. First of all I'm in the library module and um, these I picked some images here that we're going to watermark. Um, why don't I make this, uh, get rid of these side panels. I could hit shift tab and it will get rid of all the side panels and I'm gonna make the thumbnails bigger just so we could see them. So I just chose a nice variety of images. I chose a black and white image and some different a night image, just some different ones that we could use. Alright, now if you have a Mac, uh, to edit watermarks you would go to Lightroom Edit Watermarks. If you have a PC it would be Edit and then Edit Watermarks. So edit watermarks and this dialog box comes on. Now you can see right up here at the top we have watermark style text or graphic and over here it gives us to start out with on a text watermark it gives us this basic watermark which is the copyright symbol and my name. Now you can see here we just have this checkerboard pattern that means I do not have any images selected to show where that watermark and what it would look like on the watermark, kind of a preview. So I'm going to cancel this box for now and I'm going to select all my images. I'm going to click on the first one and then I'm going to hold the shift key down and click on that last one. So I have all five selected now. Now I'm going to go back to Lightroom Edit Watermarks. If you have PC it's Edit Edit Watermarks and we're here. Now as I mentioned it, it uh, gives you this preliminary watermark with the copyright symbol and your name. Now you could edit that, it's already highlighted so you could type something else in there. If you accidentally delete the copyright symbol, if you have a P or um, if you have a PC and it will accept alt keys, you could hold the alt key in and hit 169 and you should get your uh, copyright symbol. If you have a uh, Mac, you hold the option key and you hit G. And you could see I just did it, I added a copyright symbol. So Option G, Option G, Option G. You could just do that all you want. Now you could edit this as is. I think maybe I'll add the date, 2014. Uh, so, um, you know, we'll leave that as is. You could put write anything you want there. You could put your studio in there. As a matter of fact, um, why don't I do a double line? I'm going to hit Enter, and I'm going to write my um, website. I'm going to put www.anthonymorganti.com. Okay, so we have a double line in there. Um, now, we're going to, what we could do with this now, we could change the text. So right now we're using Myrid Web Pro. Um, I mean, you could just, there's all this crazy text in here. So you could just, um, I don't know, just go and try to find one that you like. Uh, Helvela, Helve, Helve, I never could say that. Helvetica New. That, let's go with that because I just don't want to keep searching. Uh, style regular, medium, light. So we could just go, you know, make it lighter, italic, uh, different styles. You could just, you know, pick 
and choose what you like. Now if you have one line, aligning won't do anything. This doesn't align it left of the picture, right of the picture. We'll do that later. What this does is if you have multiple lines, you could either have it left aligned or center aligned. See how it pulled the um, the uh, top line more to the right so it's center or right aligned so everything's to the right. So if you just look look right here as I do these, you can see how it just moves them around to align it. So we're going to go with center align just because I want to be different. The color, we're going to stay with white, but you could just, it comes up with your color picker here and you can pick any color you want. Shadow, now um, it's hard to see I'm sure in the video and I really can't maximize this any bigger. I don't think I can anyways. Oh yes I can. There we go. Sweet. See I learn something new every day. And you probably can't see it on this image but I could go to different images right here. You know, Remember how I selected all my images before? If I click these arrows it'll show the copyright on each of the different images that I select that I used or I selected to begin with. So none of those really show the um, copyright to or the shadow too well. Um, perhaps we'll use this one. So what we do is the opacity of the shadow. This is basically how dark the shadow is. This is the shadow that these letters are casting back onto the image. The offset, um, now you could see a shadow there I bet. See how it's casting the shadow low? So it's making it more obnoxious. The radius, so you could kind of spin it around where it's going to be. And the angle is kind of spinning it around. So the angle kind of spins it around. The radius is kind of making it, it to me, more blurry, less blurry. Okay? Never really messed around with those, obviously. Uh, the watermark itself, the actual letters, you could uh, change the opacity so that you could actually see through to the image below. Something like that. Now we uh, have this proportional fit and fill area here. Proportional means no matter what size uh, photograph I'm putting my watermark on, what size image, it always will be proportional. It will always be about this big in this corner. If I want to fit it to the um, image, I click that box there and it will fit it, you know, so it, all the letters are on the image. If fill, it's going to be really big. Now that you would do if you were a stock photographer and you were doing your own stock site and you didn't want anyone, you know, stealing stuff off the, the stock site, you would do probably something like that. But as you could see, that's got limited use and it's pretty obnoxious. So we'll go back to proportional and you could change the size now. So you can make it bigger, smaller, and it will always be that size in all your images. So if you have an image that's, um, you know, you know, 4200 by 2800, or you have another one that's 300 by 400, it's always going to be this size in the image. So proportional, fill your size. Now the um, inset is horizontal and vertical. That's pr how far you pull it away from the edges. So in horizontal here, as you can see, as I move it to the right, I'm actually sliding it over to the right. And vertical, as I move it to the right, I'm bringing it up a little bit. So I'm moving it away from the edges. Now here's the anchor port. This is where you actually could move it to different corners. So you could have it in the upper left, upper right, lower right, and pretty much anywhere in between right in the middle, something like that. So we'll leave it in the lower left. You could also now rotate it. So right now it's it's horizontal and its perspective is, as we look at it is like normal text. We could rotate it like so it's sideways or upside down, stuff like that. Just keep flipping it around. So that's really it on the um, text watermark. Now, as I mentioned, you could do a graphic watermark also. Um, one thing I should add, too, I didn't show you, is we're going to save this so we could save it as a preset. So we click Save down here, and I'm going to call this uh, Text oops, Copy Right. Okay, and we're going to click Create. Okay, now I created that watermark. Now. Uh, we're going to make a graphic watermark. We're going to go back up to Lightroom or Edit, Edit Watermarks. And now we're going to do the graphic one. So we're going to choose a graphic. Uh, we have to load it to the computer. We click that box there. It will automatically come up with Choose. And I have on my desktop logo. So we're going to put my logo on these watermarks. And we're going to click Choose. And as you can see, 
there it is right there. Now what we're going to do though, uh, all this now because we're not using text we, is um, not active so we're not going to be doing anything that with that. But the water part, watermark effects are the same so we could change the opacity so we can make it less um, visible or re more see-through. We could change the size so we can make it bigger, smaller, stuff like that. We could also do that same fit and fill, which we don't really want to do. So we're going to make it like that maybe. And then we could do this uh, offset. Uh, they call it inset to me. It's called offset, but you know, who am I to judge um, Adobe? So there we go. Uh, we keep it off from the sides a little bit and we're going to anchor it wherever we want to anchor it. I'm just going to leave it in that lower left hand corner. And um, that's it. I'm going to save this one and I'm going to call this one the graphic watermark. Clever, huh? So we click create. Okay, now how do you apply the watermark? There's four different areas where you apply the watermark. I hit shift tab by the way to bring back um, all my uh, panels. You do it in the export dialog, which I'm going to do in a minute. You could also do it in the book module. You could apply watermarks there in the slideshow module or in your print module. So you could actually print your uh, print with the watermark on it. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it in the export dialog. So we're going to go to File, um, Export. Now it's going to export these images um, to my desktop. I'm not going to change much here. I've gone through the export dialog several times. I'm going to use custom settings and I'm going to call this uh, watermark test. Okay. Now we're going to drag down. Now one thing I want to add, you could um, put the watermarks could go on JPEGs, PSDs, and TIFFs. You cannot put a watermark on a DNG or the original file. Only on JPEGs, uh, PSDs and TIFFs. So we're going to do a JPEG. We're not going to limit size or anything like that. I'm going to sharpen for the screen. Here's the watermark right here. We're going to click that box and we're going to choose the text watermark, right? Or the graphic watermark. Also notice here it has a simple copyright watermark. In Lightroom 2 and before there wasn't this control over watermarks. All there was was whatever was in the metadata, whoever created the file. So if in the metadata I put in uh, Anthony Morganti in my camera, you know, in my camera when I take a, a shot it says it, the creator is Anthony Morganti. Well that's in the metadata. So all it will do is put a copyright symbol in front of Anthony Morganti. That's what it does. So that's the simple copyright watermark. That's um, So if you don't do anything with what we just did in, in creating a watermark, you'll have this choice. But we're going to use the graphic watermark just because I think it's obnoxious and I want to use it. And um, we're going to export it. So it's as simple as that. We check that box and we're choosing the graphic uh, watermark and we're going to choose export. Now as you can see the progress bar, it's going to take a while and plus I chose to make full size images with highest resolution. I, it's going to take a little longer than probably I should have allowed it. I should have probably limited the size, but I don't think ahead. I usually just wing it. So we'll let it create its images and you could just watch this exciting status bar go across um, till it gets done. I do have it though so it will ding when it's done. And uh, at that time usually my dog salivates for some unknown reason. I'm not sure, really sure why when he hears the ding. Um, but any second now there we go, and there's my dog Archie salivating right now. There's Archie there. Anyways, here's our watermarks. So what we could do is on a Mac, I could hold the um, space bar down and click on an image, and I get this preview. And as you can see, it has my graphic watermark here. Now, one thing you got to be careful about when you mess with colors uh, and where you have it. Now, you could see I purposely chose this kind of predominantly blue. Actually, I chose a lot of predominantly blue shots. So you could see how you could lose some lettering in the in the uh, shot if it's the watermark happens to be over an area that's the same color as the letters. Now that will happen in the text or the graphic watermark, so you got to be careful of that. So as we go through, you could see this image here. Looks really nice there. Looks good there. And there's this uh, abstract shot I took of this guitar player. Um, it looks okay. 
and of course in black and white it kind of sticks out really really strong so that's it that's how you do watermarks um, pretty much you know that's all there is to it there's not you know it's not that difficult of a thing to do uh, if you choose to do it and I do highly recommend you do do it if you have a business and you're posting some shots of a shoot you just did to Facebook or to Google Plus or somewhere like that put the watermark on there because people are gonna abscound those images there's family members are gonna see it and they're gonna take them they're gonna either put them in their um, they'll use them on their cover on Facebook that's one thing I actually do use them for um, I take a lot of shots of the city I live in in Buffalo as you could see this shot here um, this previous shot here this is all city of Buffalo shots and when I put these on Facebook I notice people take it and they put it as their cover on Facebook so I don't really care you know they're not you know I really don't care that they use it but I kinda like to do cre get credit for it or I like to drive people back so I will actually now put a watermark on those images and what I found in the cover images on Facebook they don't take the whole image you know it takes kind of a narrow shot of this of the image so I put my watermark like up in here um, really in an obnoxious spot but I have it really small and faint generally and and so I'll have it in here so that way when people take my shot and they're putting it as their cover they'll that'll be shown it won't be cut out so that people will know that you know this guy took that image and you know that's who you contact if you want to really buy some images so um, that's it. it generally you know if you're using them just to you know post a flicker or something like that and you don't you know people I don't know it's up to you it's really a, like I mentioned a personal choice if you want to use watermarks or not well that's it for episode 34 thank you everyone who watches all my videos I really do appreciate it if you guys have time go over to my website anthonymorganti.com I have all kinds of photography stuff over there and if you could I'd really appreciate it if you went to YouTube and you subscribe to my YouTube channel that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys soon.